Hey everyone, Professor Hank here, and today we're going to talk about binary files in C++. To start with, consider if you try to write the number 8675 to a text file. What would end up in the text file? You'd end up with four separate characters. One for the eight, one for the six, one for the seven, one for the five. So to store those four characters, you would need four bytes because one character is a byte when we're talking about a primitive character data type. So you would need four bytes to store that in the file. Compare that to storing that number in an unsigned short integer. So if you were to store 8675 in that variable, how many bytes would you need? You'd need two bytes. So two bytes because an unsigned short is two bytes. So to store 8675 as an unsigned short, two bytes. To write it into a file, four bytes. Why? What's the difference? Well, the difference is a big reason or a big advantage that binary files potentially have over text files. So when you are storing 8675 in an unsigned short, you're storing it in its raw mode. You're storing it as a binary number. And that binary number is going to take fewer bits, fewer overall bytes to represent that number. But because of the way that numbers get stored in a text file, you need more bytes because you need a byte for each character. A character variable in a program in memory takes up one byte because you need a byte to store the ASCII code that represents that character. So when you have a text file, you just have a file that's formatted according to ASCII codes. So a four digit number takes up four bytes, but if you store it in memory, it gets stored in raw format so it can use fewer bytes. Now, what binary files do is they store the data in that same raw format as the unsigned short. So as a result of this, you can save space because it takes fewer bytes to represent the same data. And you can also speed up how long it takes to read from a file and to write to a binary file, because as we're going to see, you can perform several equivalent writes or reads in one operation. So for example, consider if you had an array and you were going to write that out to a text file, you'd have to have a loop. You'd have to traverse that array, writing one number at a time from that array. However, with binary files, you can write the entire array in one write operation. So it can be substantially faster. So you get a speed bonus and you get a size bonus in terms of how much memory you need potentially to store your data. So let's see an example of how to work with binary files. Okay, so we're gonna have to include fstream to gain access to the fstream object. And then we can create a fstream object variable. I'll call this fout. And then we're gonna attempt to open it just like we would a text file, but this isn't gonna be a text file because we're gonna use a couple of flags to make it a binary file, right? So if you create an OF stream object variable, say like this, that defaults to a text file. We're not doing that. That's why we're going to use the F stream object and we're going to name the file. We'll call it um, file.dat just because we can name it whatever we want, but traditionally .dat indicates binary file or can indicate a binary file. And we're going to say here iOS out because we're going to open this for writing and we're going to open it in binary mode. So iOS binary. So we can check and verify if the file successfully opened, just like we can with text files. Um, and then if it doesn't, we can print out an error message, error opening file, right? But now what we're going to do is we're going to take that integer variable and we'll assign it the unsigned short. That's what we were talking about, right? Unsigned short integer. And we'll assign it eight, six, seven, five. Now here's how we're going to, we have to give it a name. Here's how we're going to write to our binary file. So we're going to use this member function called write. And the write function is going to require two arguments. One is going to be the memory address of where the data is coming from. So we need the memory address of this variable right here. So that's the first thing. Okay. The second thing we're going to need is we're going to need how many bytes we're writing to the file. So in this case, we've got an unsigned short. We know that an unsigned short is two bytes. So we can just put two here, or we can use the size of operator and let it figure it out for us. Now you take a look at that and you're looking at the ampersand X here, getting the memory address of X, and we're getting a red squiggle indicating an error. Why? 
because this first argument has to be a character pointer. It has to be a character memory address. The problem here is that this is an unsigned short. So what we have to do is we have to cast it by using the reinterpret cast operator into a character pointer, All right? So we can do that. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and we'll close our file. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna grab two bytes from this memory address and dump it into our file that we opened with found. So it's gonna throw it into file.dat. So let's go ahead and test and run this. So we've got no error message, so that's good. So now let's take a look at the contents of file.dat. Okay, so you see that? There's no number there, is there? No, why? Because we dumped the raw data into the file. And so that raw data just happens to correspond to the ASCII codes for these two characters here. So when you look into a binary file, you're not always going to see text. Now, how big is that file? Now, if you were to go check the properties of that file, you'd see that it shows two bytes. Why? Because we wrote two bytes to the file, not four. Now, if I was, instead of opening this in binary mode, just opening it as a text file, then I wouldn't need to use F out right. I could just do something like this, right? And then that's gonna write it as a text file. And if we were to open that text file, you'd see now that it's formatted as a text file. So you can see 8675. This is a text file because of how it's formatted, not how it's named, how we opened it and how we write to it. And if you were to check the properties of that file, you'd see that now it is four bytes. Okay, so now let's see how we can read from a binary file. So let's change this to binary, so that way we're back to work with the binary files. And we'll get rid of that, and we'll use our write again. And to do a read, it's just the opposite. So we'll go ahead and open the file this time for reading, so iOS in, in binary mode. Okay, and then we'll do our testing just like before. Have an error message just like before. And then we'll do our reading and we'll read it to a different variable just to make sure our testing is good. So we'll create a separate variable, unsigned short y, and then we'll do fount.read. And we're gonna do a similar kind of thing, reinterpret cast because it has to be a character address in that first argument and we're going to send it to the memory address of the y variable this guy right here and how many bytes do we want to read from the sot and how many bytes do we want to read from the file we want to read an unsigned shorts worth of bytes which is two bytes and then we'll go ahead and close and then we'll see out the contents of our y variable and i'll initialize y here to zero just so we can prove again or help prove that uh, our read was successful. And let's not forget that it's size of for unsigned short there. All right, so then you can see there's the 8675, so we've got success. Now, now you only have to do this casting here if you're working with a non-character memory address. So let's say that instead I was working with a character variable, so character C, right? and we'll initialize that with A. Well, then in that case, I don't need to do any casting because C is already a character. So the memory address of C is already the memory address of a character variable. And the size of here is going to be a character because, okay, and so then we'll do the reading, and this time we'll read back into a variable, character variable, Y. And we can get rid of the casting stuff again because the first parameter, the first argument, needs to be a character memory address. And so then we're going to read in the size of a character. So let's test that. Okay, so you can see that that worked. Now let's see how we can write an entire array at once and how we can read an entire array at once. So let us say, again, that we're back to working with text files. Let's start off with the example, all right? We'd open the file for writing. So we'll say O of stream F, F open, and then we'll say file.dat, all right? And then we could test it and then do our writing. Otherwise, we'll have an error message. Okay, now if we had an array of integers say right so we did had something like this equals eight six seven five three oh nine if we wanted to write that to a text file we would have to traverse the entire array one element at a time writing each element one at a time so we could do something like 
you know, this, right? And then we could do our write. And then once we're done with the file, close it. Okay, and if we run it, no errors. Let's go look at the contents of that file. You can see there's our numbers written to the text file, 8675309. Now, looking at that going, well, what's the big deal? Who cares? Well, keep in mind, you know, that we had to do a whole loop. We had to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven writes. Okay, so it was seven operations. Now contrast that with if we use a binary file instead. Let's open our FOUT for writing in binary mode. Test. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to say FOUT.write and we have to reinterpret cast just like we did before. So we'll put a here. Now notice I didn't say ampersand a, right? Because arrays are pointers. So a is a pointer. So if you're confused by that, consider if we had something like this, right? Int x, and then we did int star b equals memory address of x. If we did that, then I could just pass the b here as an argument and it wouldn't be a problem, right? Because again, this is a pointer and this is a pointer, okay? So we'll just go with a there. And then we'll do size of. Now in this context, we can pass to size of the name of our array and C++ will be able to figure it out. Let's not forget to put our out there. Okay, let's test what we have. No error message, excellent. So probably wrote, but we didn't read back in yet. So we're not 100% sure. If we wanted to increase our confidence level, then what could we do? Because if you went to go open the file, you know, you probably see a bunch of garbage in there because remember it's raw binary data in there. So remember this is going to be 28 bytes in that file because the array is 28 bytes long. So how can you increase your confidence level? Just again, go check out the size of that file. And if it's non-zero or if it matches up the number of bytes that you think it should be, then that should make you feel a little bit better. It's not 100% certain, but you can know you're on the right track. And if you're doing a homework assignment or something like that, then you can look at that and you can say, okay, um, I was supposed to write 28 bytes. The size of my file is 28 bytes. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good to continue. Okay, but now let's make sure by reading the array back in. And again, we'll read it into a separate array, into a different array, just for testing purposes. So let's go ahead and create a new array, which is seven elements long because we have seven numbers that we want to read into. This time we're going to open it for reading. So we need iOS in and we want binary mode. We'll do a little test as usual. And then we'll have an error message here. And then we're just going to undo what we did. So we're going to read into the memory location that we want this data to go to. What's the memory location? The array B. And how much do we want to read into that array? We want to read in um, the size of the array. Right? Once we're done with that, let's close. And then we'll print out the contents of our new array, our destination array, to make sure that it worked. So we'll do something like this. We'll say for int I, B, and then we'll just see out I with a space. And then we'll move to the next line. So let's see if it matches. And it does. So we now know that our read and our write operation works. Now this size of operator here, using that with the second argument to pass the size of your source and your target memory location works fine in this context. But let me give you an example of a context where it doesn't work. Let's write a function called write array and we'll pass to it as an argument um, an array. Okay, so we'll say uh, int a. And you're thinking, well, I don't need to pass anything else because I'll just use the size of operator. So then you go ahead and you open your file or writing in binary mode. Right? You do your little check and then you try to do your write. So you say, um, try to do your write in your close. So you say fout.write and then you reinterpret cast as a character pointer and you pass it the array parameter because you're passing an array to this function, right? And so then you think, oh, well, I'll do size of A like we just did in main. That should work just fine. Close the file, have a little error message out here. 
right now we'll go ahead and we'll test that in main so you got this function that's supposed to write arrays to files so we'll create an array here we'll call this um, c and we'll initialize it with some numbers using an initialization list and then we'll call our function and we'll pass our function or our array to the function right so you compile that and run it and so no error messages good so how big should the file be well we should have dumped you know this many bytes into the file so there's four bytes per integer and we've got what 10 integers in this array so that should be 40 bytes that were dumped to the array so now if we go and we take a look at the file check its properties we're going to see problem now what is that problem the problem is that it shows the file as only being eight bytes so obviously we're missing something here well what are we missing what we're missing is the fact that that parameter it's not an array because what are arrays they're actually pointers so what this is what this parameter is it's actually a pointer so we could just as easily have written this like that right they mean the same thing in this context so this isn't an entire array parameter this is a pointer parameter how big is a pointer on a 64-bit system a pointer is eight bytes because it needs eight bytes to store the 64 bits for your operating system so that's why it showed eight bytes in the properties for that file because we wrote a total of eight bytes to the file because pointer is eight bytes so this ended up passing as that second argument eight so what do we do to fix that well in this case we'll have to pass a second argument which is the size of the array our size of our array is 10 so we'll pass that now we still have to be careful because you might think all right well then what i'll do is i'll pass let's let's see some mistakes first don't do this right because what's this going to give us right? what's that going to give us well that's the size of size well what's size it's an integer so this would only be four bytes okay so don't do that don't just pass size as a second argument why not because what got passed to size right we passed the size constant here well what's inside that 10. so 10 got copied here so what got passed is that second argument which represents how many bytes should be written 10. we need more than 10 bytes to be written we need 40 bytes so what could you do here you could say size times the size of an int that could work because this is going to be 10 based off of what our argument is here and so then 10 times the size of an int because it's an integer array would give us our 40 or you could just do size times four i mean you could do that too but times the size of an int is is better okay so now let's write the opposite function for reading the array back in and we're gonna just do everything again but just this time it's gonna be in reverse so instead of doing a read we need to do a write so we need to open it for reading and we need to do a read operation and this is going to work just fine going into this a parameter because remember this is a pointer so it's got the memory address of the array so let's do read array and we'll go into a different array and test it just like we did before all right so let's define a new array here and it'll be size elements and then once that's done we'll print out the contents of our array just to test it and we'll move to the next line so what do we got we should see 510-867-5309 and we do so now you know how to store data in binary files and the difference between binary files and text files